So we just brought the new frame home from Powder Coat. It's New Year's Eve day. They look a little different once they get powder coat on them than they do when they aren't powder coated. They start to look pretty nice. So first order of business is going to be clean out all the holes where all the bolts go, steering shafts go, pedals bolt on where the spindles, kingpins go down through, those holes all got to be cleaned out. Also brought back the box full of spindles here that I had made. These all got powder coated. Look really nice. If you remember we were going to be down in the basement polishing those pans, floor pans, so I got these out here ready to go. Now we're busy putting our spindles in and our spindles I start with a little machine bushing underneath the bolt head there and then on the bottom we will put a 16 millimeter stainless steel washer on the bottom right there when we get ready to put our nut on that way because the threads are at the bottom of that spindle hanger you do not want to have the threads in your spindle hanger. You want to have them below the spindle hanger. So you're going to put that washer on there. That allows your nut to snug that up. Common mistake for everybody that runs these carts is that they let too much slop between the hanger and the spindle. That allows your spindle to prematurely wear and it flops back and forth when it gets a lot of wear in it. If you keep those snugged up, actually the contact area between the spindle and the hanger does more for your spindle staying nice and uh, snug and not wearing out than what the actual spindle bushing itself does. So initially you want to set these up so they got a, quite a bit of drag on them. They might be hard to steer the first day or two you run them then they'll start to free up. Once they get freed up good and you get the uh, powder coat started to wear off or your paint, whichever you're using, you'll have to re-snug these every now and then because they will uh, want to wear, wear in a little bit and wear that paint and powder coat off there. So keep your spindles tightened up. I've seen people that have spindles that allow their wheels to flop back and forth in camber and uh, makes for a real poor hand well, go. we've been working about four and a half hours now so by having most of the parts ready before I get the chassis back it starts going together pretty fast we'll soon have the front end together now anytime I take and drill a bolt to put a cotter pin through if it's a 3 8 or larger bolt, I always drill at least an eighth inch hole in it so that I can put a substantial cotter pin in it. I don't like doing steering parts with a little flimsy cotter pin. I like my steering shaft, I don't bother to chrome that. We build our carts to race. Uh, they'll still show nice. 95% of that steering shaft to be covered up anyway with an Nassau panel so you'll hardly see any of it. Steering wheel steering wheels I get from Speedway Motors they, they look a lot nicer on the cart than an Azusa wheel and the only bad thing about this wheel is it does have one inch more dish than most of the stock factory wheels had. Um, on some carts if the steering wheel is really close to you it might be a little bit of a problem. Well I'm getting ready to hook up the throttle assembly to this. I always take a, a bushing, put a bushing in here and that allows this to be able to be moved around if you take the bushing out it makes it really easy to put the spring on. We're hooking up the throttle. I use a more modern throttle assembly setup on my carts. Um, 
doesn't use the big long rods that hook up along the seats and that sort of thing. If all that stuff was really the way to go on throttle assemblies, uh, they'd still be doing it today. Uh, these give really good pullback, allows your lines to come in and, and anchor really well. One of the things you want to do when you have your throttle cable on, and a lot of guys don't do this, is make sure that not only do you want a little ball end or whatever on your cable to pull your cable on this side, <clears throat> you also want to have another throttle <clears throat> stop set screw piece on this other side to help push it back. Even though that cable's flexible, you want to have the return going back with the cable so the cable can't be stuck in the housing. A lot of guys re uh, only depend on that uh, spring on the carburetor to return the throttle and that'll get you in trouble at some point. May get you hurt or may get somebody else hurt if you have a stuck throttle out on the track. So you always want to think safety when you set all this stuff up. There, these carts can be fast and they're not just a toy. Alright, I just got this I just got this all together. And you want to have your enough a, a thread on your rod <clears throat> so that when you get your throttles hooked up, this spring should bottom out when the throttle's full open so you can't twist the throttle shaft off in your carburetor. So you want to have enough adjustment on this end. Believe me, this thing will snap back. Now since we were down here before, got the throttle hooked up but also have the, the front bumper installed. I mounted on heim joints at the ends. No matter what this front end does, it won't ever bind anything up. Plus everything can rotate inside this tube. Very efficient setup, doesn't weigh hardly anything. Uh, and I, like I said before, I, I like to walk. When I leave an event, I like to walk away. So it protects my feet. Should anything bad happen. I just put the bolts in on the front bumper, or they're just in loosely right now. One of the reasons I run a front number panel a lot of times is that many of the tracks they have a hard time reading their numbers when they're just on that Nassau panel. Put a white panel or whatever panel you put on the front of your cart with a big number on it. Really helps the scorekeepers out. Uh, may not seem like a big thing to you but it's a big thing to them. And if it helps them, even though it's not truly the traditional vintage method, um, if it helps them out that's a big plus. Another thing I do is when I mount a throttle pedal, I don't mount it straight up and down, I mount it tilted back because the only time it's going to ever be that way is when it's just sitting here because even when you get in your cart and you go to start your cart, you've automatically pushed the throttle part way so you're into the straight position and it just makes it easier. Uh, you don't have so much forward travel when you are got the throttle all the way down. It's a little easier on the ankle and foot, especially when you get to be up. Also, you might notice that when your pedals are mounted this way, it doesn't seem like much, but uh, that's quite an increase in leg room versus a pedal that's normally straight up and down or mounted behind the axle. Uh, in, a, in a rear cart, a couple inches is huge. In the case of this cart, this cart has a, a two inch stretch chassis. It's two inches longer here in the front end. Being two inches longer here with this pedal set up, uh, I don't care if you're six foot three, this cart's going to be relatively comfortable for you. A lot of the people that get into vintage carting right away, they don't want a rear cart because they don't fit in one. Well, it's true, they don't fit in some of them. And the older rear carts had the seat two inches further forward than what the later rear carts did. So if you have one of those carts, uh, you don't want to be very big because you're probably not going to fit in that one. In the case of the first one that I did when I got into vintage carting, because I wanted the same thing I had when I was a kid, and I did find that, but 
the seat was so straight up and down I couldn't sit in the cart because of a motor vehicle accident I had with my pickup truck driving off a four foot bank at 55 mile an hour and ripping my back apart I could not sit in that cart um, one day of practice in that cart and I would be laying in my trailer the rest of the weekend because I couldn't walk across the parking lot so all my carts yes the seats tilt back more and maybe that's not the earlier carts that didn't have that advantage for seating but you know a lot of times there's things that happen to people that require you to have to make some changes in order to even be able to drive one of these and for the purists they don't like it but in reality you got to make a few changes here and there in order to be able to comfortably drive these things if you're not comfortable in a cart you're not going to be able to drive it. given a little bunch of little pointers that I found in here you don't have to agree or disagree with them doesn't make any difference to me when you put your cart together but it may help a bunch of people in the end and if it does that's a good thing because the more people we get on the track the more people we see at the events the more fun we get to have really enjoy hanging out with everybody getting back to the steering wheel the three quarter inch bolts that hold that steering wheel on because this is an automotive wheel you have to slot those holes each about an eighth of an inch for them to have the right configuration for the Azusa yeah. steering wheel. This is the steering wheel here uh, Speedway Motors there's the part number for you if anybody decides they want to use this Yeah, I'm just starting to hang the back axle in, getting the mounts and everything in place. Um, one of the things I also use here is I get these stainless washers from Fastenal, and they're almost like an AN washer. If you look at, there's there's three different washers right there. We have. The one I use, which is actually in this case, this is an 8 millimeter washer, stainless steel. That's 5 16 cadmium washer. And here is a 5 16 washer that they make for a 5 16 bolt. I don't like them because they're um, extremely thin. Uh, a regular washer it's a little bit thicker but these um, stainless metric washers are thicker and they don't have as much area it doesn't stick out around the head of the bolt as what a regular washer does fits nice and you know it's just enough to get the job done here cleans up your work a lot so I use uh, six millimeter washers like that stainless from Fastenal instead of the standard quarter inch eight millimeter for five sixteenths ten millimeter for three eighths I don't have to worry about them getting rusty strong washer cleans up your work project bunch. <laughs>